Kia ora, I'm Miriam Makamo. Vitamin C for a cold? Sure, but for cancer? Well, to doctors, Anton Kudaya is something of a miracle. Riddled with cancer, he was expected to live only a few more weeks. And yet, a year on, this father of three is literally running and jumping. Anton largely credits a highly controversial treatment, vitamin C. And surprisingly, groundbreaking research here in New Zealand indicates that science may actually back his belief. This from Ian Sinclair. I got the shock of my life when they looked at me and said, Anton, there's nothing more that we can do for you. Constable Anton Kuraya lays out the uniform he loves. The one he expected to be buried in. Acute myeloid leukaemia, cancer of the blood, and without treatment, they say, um, you would die within eight weeks. Every year, cancer kills more than 8,000 Kiwis. Now, that works out to be around 20 people a day who die from this disease. One of them was meant to be Anton Kuraya. But Anton had a surprise in store, one that astonished his friends, his family, his doctors, and most of all, himself. Look at Anton today, and it's hard to believe he was supposed to be dead more than a year ago. And yet it was while trying to outrun a suspect in his hometown of Kamo near Whangarei that he got the first warning. And I think I only managed about maybe 10, 15, 20 metres and I was out of energy, absolutely out of energy. And the guy disappeared and that was the end of the chase. When he was finally diagnosed and, uh, and then, you know, they said leukaemia and immediately thought back, well, these are the symptoms. They tried chemo to no avail. How did they put it to you? Uh, you know, sorry, Anton. Um, the initial uh, chemotherapy that we used for you just hasn't really done much for you. Um, the cancer is kind of behaving like, um, what was it, an aggressive teenager? Yeah, it wasn't doing what it was told. And so when he did arrive home um, and uh, he told me, um, just literally everything went black, everything collapsed. It would be devastating news for their three young sons. We didn't tell them that that day that he came home. Um, it was just too hard to do. But they would have to be told they would lose their dad in four to eight weeks. It was, I mean, I've heard people crying before, but this, this was absolute howling. Yeah. And for anyone Not who has broken. kids and you're in that sort of situation, I mean, it's, it's just howling, just howling, and just, just continuous. Then there was his second family, the Force. The only thing that I was really concerned about at the time, because I was thinking about my funeral, was uh, whether or not I could um, be buried in my uniform. I didn't have to say too much at all. You know, all I got was a hug and uh, a pat on the back and just, you know, everything's going to be fine, Anton. Don't you worry about it. Even after you, you leave, you know, we'll look after your family. And that's all I really wanted to hear. True to their word, fellow officers at his station in Kamal rallied around him. They did uh, fun runs. They, what, made over $10,000, $12,000 for me. When he got sent home from Auckland Hospital, they said he was palliative, he had two or three weeks to live. Dr Andrew Miller, not just Anton's GP, but a mate who took it hard. The description of his bone marrow when they took it out was it was just jelly, and 60% of the jelly was cancer cells. And they'd done everything they could, given all the treatments they could, and just said, this is it, we've done all we can do, and go home and get your affairs in order. <laughs> But everyone reckoned without a treatment, often dismissed as quackery. Well, it was my big boy that came back from school one day and had a bit of a chat with uh, a mate of his. The news that infusions of high levels of vitamin C just might help him. He just said, 
What have we got to lose? Let's give this a go. I was nervous. I don't like needles anyway. My veins had pretty much shrunk up because of the chemotherapy, so that was, that was going to be a struggle just finding the vein. Uh, but we did. It was a long shot. Remission was known to occur in only a small percentage of vitamin C patients. And we didn't really care about no, no cure or anything like that or, or, or complete recovery or, or whatever. It was just, just trying to get some extra time. When did you start to see a difference, Louise? Immediately. Honestly, it was immediately. Once he started the vitamin C, at the same time, of course, we also we overhauled the diet. A diet also heavy on vitamin C. This is already common sense, isn't it? Oh, I think... Tons more people have probably got a better idea of, of how to juice it. I think it could have saved your life? Part of the plan. The question, was that plan of diet and vitamin C infusion working? Just 10 weeks after being sent home to die, doctors took another bone marrow biopsy. To their astonishment, pale cancerous cells were replaced by regenerated bone marrow. His blood tests are completely normal. You wouldn't know there's anything wrong with them. I mean, that's, you know, unbelievable that that occurred. Now, Anton's pretty convinced that it was all down to the vitamin C. What's your take on that? I couldn't be sure. He'd done at the same time the end of his chemotherapy, he had introduced vitamin C, he'd radically changed his diet in terms of juicing up everything, and he'd come home to be surrounded by his friends and family. So there was a whole lot of stuff that actually happened. If there was a um, clear-cut correlation between the vitamin C improving you know, his survival, and that was part of the equation, then yeah, I'd love to know. Cheers, mate. Yeah. All the best. It's a recovery that's left Anton himself relieved, but still puzzled. Are you seriously advising you know, cancer patients to give up their regular treatment for food. No way, no, no way. It's, it's an option that they could consider to add to what they're doing. Next up, so could vitamin C be a weapon in the fight against cancer? He's not alone in seeing a dramatic effect. A Kiwi scientist reveals her groundbreaking research. So what's stopping you? We need a million dollars. In a Christchurch lab, Professor Marguerite Visses is trying to solve a mystery. Could vitamin C be an effective weapon against cancer? We think that vitamin C is potentially another tool in the toolbox. She suspects these tissue samples may hold the answer. You'll remember Constable Anton Karaya's remarkable comeback from terminal leukaemia after starting vitamin C treatment. I think his story's a really interesting and compelling story. He's not alone in the world in having, seeing a dramatic effect. Take the case of Graham Gager. I have prostate cancer. Uh, I've had it for about eight years now. How are you doing? Good day. When Sunday caught up with Graham and his daughter Kelsey four years ago, he'd just begun vitamin C treatment. You're dirty, Tess. You've got to start rolling. Today, he right, believes right. vitamin C helped him control the disease. And, uh, it made me feel a lot better. Graham had high levels of PSA. That's a marker in the blood linked to prostate cancer. After using vitamin C a few times, my PSA, which is my blood levels, uh, had dropped down, uh, that's a good sign. We don't want high PSA. And it stayed down for quite a while. Thinking he was OK, he stopped taking the vitamin C. And of course, it started coming back. You know. As the PSA levels came back up, he decided to go back to the treatment. It's really helped me get on with life and move around. And, and I do feel great. I really do when I've been on it. And my condition is pretty good, I guess. Right, let's go. So, does vitamin C take the credit for Graham and Anton Karaya's good health, or is it something else? We don't know what to make of it. We'd like to know what to make of it. 
but already the research appears groundbreaking. In initial trials on mice, Professor Vizes discovered animals with more vitamin C had a better chance of surviving cancer. The higher the spike, the more vitamin C there is in that tumour sample. And those tumours that have the most vitamin C are the slowest to grow. And testing human tissue, they got the same results. The theory is vitamin C restricts the growth of the blood supply to the tumour as it enlarges. What does that mean then for cancer research, for fixing cancer? That's what we want to find out. We want to know if we increase the amount of vitamin C in the tumour, is that going to slow down the tumour growth as well? We suspect it will. In other words, can it be proved that vitamin C is an effective medication for cancer? The next step, monitor cancer patients like Graham as they receive high-dose vitamin C. To test that, Professor Vizes Otago University Lab is ideally placed in Christchurch. It's the perfect partnership behind me, Christchurch Hospital, with all its cancer doctors and cancer patients right next door to a cancer laboratory. The result, one of the world's best tissue banks for cancer research. Professor Vizes wants to use that partnership with the hospital specialists and the data from the tissue bank in a clinical trial of high-dose vitamin C. We need to, to know whether an intervention, like giving somebody additional vitamin C, does that vitamin C actually reach the tumour? How are you? I'm good, yeah, yes, yeah. Good. Currently, patients like Graham are having their treatment done privately, but in a clinical trial, Professor Viz's team would monitor his vitamin dosage and the effect on his cancer. We need to do good clinical studies that allow us to give people vitamin C and to look at whether or not that vitamin C has an effect. So what's stopping you? Funding. Money. How much? We need... A million dollars? A million dollars is the size of a normal Health Research Council grant that would fund a project like we are planning. Um, it's a lot of money. Professor Vizes has won funding for more experiments on mice, but no approval yet for the million dollar human trials. We're ready to go. We have all of the expertise in place, we have all of the samples in place, we have all of the collaborations in place. The results Constable Anton Kuraya would love to see. A year after he was meant to have died, life is almost normal. He's back at work. I'm not on the street, <laughs> not in, the, in uniform just yet, but um, it's, it's building towards that. It's a step in the right direction. But he'd still like to know if his remission is down to vitamin C. Is vitamin C going to be a miracle cure? I think that's highly unlikely that it would be the miracle cure. I think it's more likely that it's going to be a useful tool. And if, if it is going to have an effect, it's definitely not going to be the same effect for everybody. You can do the wheels. Yeah, that's your job. You're the master at the wheels. But to the Karaya family, there's a dad and a husband who may well have been saved by this treatment. Cool, good stuff, well done and you can't put a price on that. This is why I say the research is really important because then that starts to change the decision makers mm -hmm. and, and the decisions they make because then they do have the evidence um, that there is something here in this. There's about eight and a half thousand people that die every year. If you were able to save, what, 1% of that, 85 people? A million dollars for 80, 85 people? And Anton's goal is to get back into uniform and on the front line by the end of the year.